good morning good morning good morning after actually good afternoon whoa sorry we got some, we got some echo all right today is going to be a little bit of a slower a little bit more quiet energy day i've been dealing with a lot but don't mind me let's talk about the charts we're going to go over pre-market analysis or like um sorry post-market analysis uh, i took a trade in eu today banked some profits uh, and then the remainder went break even but I'll show you exactly what I was looking at. I also have, oops. I also have another pair in mind, and I shared it in the chat. Right, Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar, and uh, New Zealand dollar. For the last like four or five days, I've been looking at uh, potential shorts, and Asia right here just had this massive, massive drop. So that's pretty exciting. But that just shakes things up in the market, which we want to see. So it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. Um, one of the things that I'm dealing with right now and before I go into the stream right here is like, it's, it's so funny because I, I just got my team to finish creating an Instagram, like a business, business kind of like a flyer. And the flyer uh, looks something like this. Like this. So this is going to be advertising our masterclass. I'm so excited to start it. Trust me, it's it's actually going to be something that I'm very, very proud of. And w once I, we got it done, I sent it to the Telegram group. I sent it to the Discord. And I was going to post it on Instagram. And then all of a sudden, I can't log into my Instagram. And I'm like, oh, no, what's going on? So I go to my, my desktop uh, and I log in to Instagram. And it works. But my phone and, and my laptop are just not, not logging in. So... I try to get in, I try to log in, and all of a sudden it's just like, it won't send me the recovery email or the messages, it won't send me the recovery emails. And and then all of a sudden I just like, okay, well maybe it's a password issue. Silly me. I change the password on the desktop, try to log in on my phone, same issues, try to log in on the computer. Now I can't get on, in on the computer. <laughs> so just a quick plug, I'm gonna do this at the end of the video here, just because it's, it's something that I'm excited about, but let's go over some post uh, post market analysis. I'll show you the couple of the trade that I took today, why I took it. We'll keep it nice and short and sweet today, and uh, be back tomorrow. Today, like I was saying, I'm looking for shorts on uh, New Zealand dollar and uh, Aussie dollar. Right? If we look at Aussie dollar here, pretty much the exact same thing, and we're just seeing strength in the dollar. So these other pairs are just a little bit weaker, right? So I didn't take any trades on those today, but I did tra take a trade on EU. I wanted to go into the analysis and show you why I took this trade. It might be a little confusing, but it's it's straightforward. Right? Looking at the four hour, looking at the four hour starting of the day, if we just clean everything off, look at what we've been doing. Right? We've been pushing down, pull back, push down, small pull back, push down, small pull back, push down, small pull back, and then drop. And then all of a sudden, we're getting this full rotation here. Well, why is this happening? And if you look to the left, right, cause everything to the left leaves clues. We broke a major low, and now we're getting a little bit of a pullback here. So any short trades for the last, you know, well, since 2024 on EU, we're looking a little bit more probable to take out a zone something like this. And then, and then, same thing we're just looking for that reaction and so as price takes it out we get price give us what we want which is the v-shaped movement right it's it's a quick in out right right here we're seeing a pause so we have a v-shape and we have a hold right those are two indications of the market where we we want to be uh like journalists or like um sherlock holmes we want to start investigating this area here and being like, well, what's going on? Because if the buyers stepped in here and then now price is up top here, do they want price to push down a little bit lower for more of a discount? Or are they willing to just take this trade here and continue back up? And this example, we have a nice V shape. Price plays around a little bit, drops, right? Gives the price a discount and it's all snatched up. Price holds comes back a little bit and it's snatched up so we know that the buyers like this price so price looks like it's continuing higher so over the last few days you could take or over the last couple weeks sorry you could take longs you could take longs but this last push here 
made a high, pulled back, pushed up here, and the buyers are pretty much like non-existent, right? So you're like, okay, well, what's going on? And you have to think about this. If price wants to go higher, right, you want a discount. So this is just the buyers are just not here. They're not snatching up this price here. They want a discount. So this was the last area that price did have a nice push and it caused a break of this little high here, this little hold. So we can just see that buyers are here, right? So buyers are here, price comes down, and then all of a sudden, look at this, it takes out the low of this little area here, this previous hold. And, but we're still thinking that the buyers probably just want a discount. So as price drops down here and takes this hold out, we get a nice push back up because we have lower prices than this. So we're getting better discount. So at this point in time, I looked at the market right there and it, we broke the previous lows. I went down to you know the next lowest time frame, and it's the same story, right? So what I can do is drop again and I wanna make a little bit, I want more and more clean story like I was saying. And you can see here, we did the same thing like we did on the higher time frame, right? We took out the low, we had a V shape, price held, we're like, okay, well, is, is the market gonna offer us better prices or are we just gonna continue up? Price did this, push down, the buyers snatched price and pushed price higher. So at that point, I know the buyers are back in the market. They got a discount even further than they did prior. So as price pushes up, holds, takes the low, and then pushes up here. And if you notice, a really good indicator that the buyers are wanting to push price higher is more aggressive moves, longer wicks, like rejection wicks, um, sweeps of liquidity, and then a full reaction. But you can see price push up, hold, it goes a little higher, drops, pushes up here. Then we got this large wick, pushes down, buyers come in here and then push price higher. And you can see that it's breaking this little hold here. So we're having buyers step into the market. So it's very safe for me to look for long trades either after this wick gets pushed down and then as it's pushing up, I can look for trades or to be even more safe, I can wait for them to break a previous level of, of, of where price held, right? Because if price holds and then breaks, we know that we have some sort of breakout. We have momentum on our side. So at this point in time, if I just draw this box to be, oops, this here, let's just draw this box here. This is kind of where price held, couldn't take the high, couldn't take the low, blah, blah, blah. Took the high, pulled back in, tried to take the low again, and then continued. So as it breaks, you know, potentially this high box here, I'm saying to myself, the buyers are stepping in, we're gonna see some good momentum. So that's when I drop down to the one minute, and I played the same story out just like I did prior, right? The more you, the more you discuss, hey, good morning, Max. Good morning, buddy. Hopefully you're feeling well, hopefully you slept well. As you can tell probably from my uh, puffy eyes, I'm a little bit sleep deprived, <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay. Um, but I was just saying the same thing as, as we did on every single time frame, right? We, we, we talk about the narrative, we talk about the story, we make the cleanest story we can for the market to move in our favor. And when we're getting that like V-shape reaction, you're saying, okay, well, we got a discount for price. Buyers want to come back in, right? If we get a hold here, this is like, do the buyers want to come back in? Do they want to, do they want to, you know, actually eat up price and take price higher? Or do they want more of a discount? And then all of a sudden they eat price and they just take and they just launch, right? We got to, we got to be aware of those situations and just identify them. So here's the, Here's the 15 minute level that I was identifying earlier. We see price push down, right? Give us a hold, just like we were saying. We're looking for price to hold and then break out in a certain direction and say, are we committed? Do we wanna to commit to that direction? And here we go, price breaks down, price pushes up. And we're like, oh, okay, we're seeing buyers step in here. Do they wanna hold price higher? So price pushes up, pulls back, do they want uh, do they want to snag more entries and take price higher? Well, no, they just fade off. 
So we can we can kind of assume from just this movement here that we're going lower. And you can do the exact same thing prior. Price holds, we broke out, right? So sellers are here. When price comes back, the sellers come back in. We have a hold in the market here. Price breaks, hold, drop, V-shaped reaction, just like I was saying, the V-shaped reaction, whatever you call it, right? If you wanna call it a V-shaped reaction with an FEG, great. That just shows the momentum kicking in. But that right there is not an area that you want to enter on. That's an indication to say, I need to investigate further. So we get the V-shaped reaction, means buyers wanted price here quite desperate, desperately. We get this hold in the market, just as, like I was explaining. Do the buyers want a deeper price or are they okay with buying price here? Right? You have to think this through. And currently, right, the 15 minute view is we're looking for like this area here to break and give us momentum. And so as price plays around, plays around, plays around, look at the wick. Right? Wicks tell the story. It's like rejection or whatever you want to call it. But it's it's essentially just the op, uh, the opposing orders getting entered in uh, and pushing price back up in here. So as price came down to this previous low here, we had more buyers say, yep, I want it. Let's take it higher. We're going higher. So this is a really good indication prior to the 15 minute that says we want to go higher. Right, so you, we're just like building the story, building the story, building the story. The session opens for me, price holds, takes the price down, and then launches. And we see buyers step in. Well, are we gonna continue, right? Price pulls back, a little bit of a pause, pulls back, higher prices, big discount. Okay, this is a good indication where we're like, okay, are the buyers gonna overpower the sellers today? Right. Are we going to take price lower? Right. We just broke a, a 15 minute significant level. And that was that that was that hold the range, the consolidation, the accumulation, whatever you want to call it. But we had a break of that level there. So we're like, OK, the sellers are going to try to step back in. Right. You could get an early entry down here or you could wait for the 15 minute to do what you want and wait for the momentum price push down up big drop, right? better discounted price, price pushes up aggressively, right? We got that V shape, that, that aggression that buyers are like, yep, we want to go higher. So we got the 15 minute in alignment, we got the one minute in alignment, everything's looking good. But then you see this hold here, right? This right here, as I was saying, the V shape is just an indication to say investigate. Once we get price push back here, if you look here, we go, well, there's sellers here and there's a lot of buyers here. Why is price holding here? Well, this makes me nervous, right? This, this spot here makes most people nervous because they say, well, we had price push up, play around, take the high and then take the low. So are we going bearish or are we going bullish, right? And that's when we use the bigger traders, the bigger momentum, right? We're, we're playing with cruise ship and, and speedboats. We're the we're the speedboat, not a cruise ship. So we, what we want to do is is wait for this pause in the market, right? This is a very good opportunity to take to take trades if you're aligning with the right story, right? And as price pushed back up here, sellers thought, okay, are we going to continue lower? And here we get this push down here, right? Push down. And then the sellers got overpowered. And as soon as price broke here, I slapped on a trade. I took a trade today. And my trade was just underneath here, right? Logical stop loss, right? That was my entry. Price rocketed up. It did pull back quite aggressively. So I didn't really get the right, like I was a little nervous. Where did I put my stop? I think it was a 3.8 here, 3.8 pip stop, I think. Uh, but this area, this area was my trade today. And, you know, it's, it's pulling back and stuff like that. But if we look at the higher time frame for our targets, right? I'm just giving out so much information on this one. This one's going to be crazy. If we're looking for higher targets, because we're, we're on the one minute, 
right? The lower time frame doesn't matter what time frame, doesn't matter what pair you trade. The lower time frame, if you do your analysis on the lower time frame, then you should use lower time frame targets. If you do the analysis on the higher time frame, you should go back to the higher time frame to do your analysis and look where price is going. I took a trade here. I'm looking to the left. We have session high, session high, right? Asia midpoint, another session, right? And Asia high. So where do you think a logical target for me to take a trade and then maybe protect myself would be? Right? Logically, it would be essentially after this first level gets taken out. This first level is going to be our London high. Right? So we're like, okay, once it breaks, my, my trades break it broken even. I'm thinking that we're going to go higher, right? I'm, I'm assuming that we're going to go higher. I got in at a, a decent spot. It's not low. It's not the best, but this is a decent spot for me to say, well, maybe we want to take out Frankfurt and take out Asia high, right? So maybe something like this, that's a big stretch, but at the same time, it's a good entry. So you can stack your positions until the price takes that out. But what I did was price broke. It continued. And I'm thinking, okay, okay, break my trade even, right? Break my trade even. I'm, I'm, I'm officially, my, my stop loss is at my break even. Price goes to the next level here, takes this level out, and breaks and closes above. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. We got, we got decent momentum, right? I'm looking at the trade like this. I'm looking at the trade like this. And I'm thinking, okay, we got we got buyer's momentum coming in the market, right? Oh, okay, we got, oh, we got sellers pushing price lower. Okay, okay, well, maybe it's just because we, we launched here a little bit. There might be a little bit more buyers here that want to come into the market. And uh, in the course that we're going to be teaching, we're going to be te teaching about traps and why liquidity and why, why price moves in certain areas. So what I'm thinking here is this break here, we could see price pull back to this zone here. Take me out, maybe I'll look for another entry. Price pushed down, right? I'm break even, price came back to a previous level. And then we had bullish momentum or bullish a candle here, right? The bullish candle here at this previous level is, is telling me that we're having some sort of support, some sort of buyer's momentum coming in. I'm holding the trade. Sellers came in. Oh no, I didn't go break even here. I, I actually did stay in this trade just. It was something like that. It was, it was <laughs> there we go. Right, buyers are coming in. I'm holding the trade. This candle wicked down and then launched. All right, so we're thinking the pretty much similar to this instance here where we have a small little hold, price breaks the low. Do we want to go lower? No, we want to go higher. So I'm holding for this next zone. Price pushed up. This this right here made me just instantly like ready to hold and ready to take partials. So we had price make a previous high. Price broke it, rejected. We're seeing bear, bearish momentum come in the market. I wanted to see price push up one last time to this level here. And if we're going to see price fall, uh, maybe sellers are gonna come back in the market. I wanna see price at least give me a small pullback and I'll exit the trade. All right, sellers come in, buyers came in, and it was around there. Something, actually, no, it was a little bit higher. It was, yeah, it was just a little bit higher, somewhere around there. I exited my trade around there, right? The entries are and entries and stop loss might be a little bit different from what my MT, sorry, MT5 was saying, but this this right here was my trade today. I'm seeing, let's like, it price pushed up, and we're seeing like an immediately pull, a strong pullback. So we're like, okay, well, the sellers are somewhere here, right? We did take out a previous session. We took out this session here. It's like, it's sellers are coming back. I'm just protecting myself or just take full TP, just like I did. Well, I took, I took like 90% 90, 90 off. 90% off, remainder at break even. Next target is either here, but what I wanted to do is actually, if I'm gonna leave that 10% on, I'm gonna go for further targets just to get a little bit more run. And so that was that was my trade and price 
came down, broke me even, and then played around a little bit. I was watching it, watching it, trying to go on Instagram support. And let's see, I'll just close this out, see where we are currently. All right. Right, so this is this was my situation today. I took the trade, price played around, as it took out a level, just like I've been teaching, as it takes out a level, you monitor price quite closely to see if you're you're gonna have that big just drop off. Or you're like, it takes it out and there was nothing there, it just continues. So price took this level out, nothing. Price took this level out, decent rejection. Decent amount of buyer or sellers here, right? Price pushes back up, wicks this. So we're like, okay, well, it's not, it's not, it's not taking this level out, right? Price pushed back up. Yeah, I got out of this trade, right? That was it. I'm done. But at least it's like when you have the right zones, you're actually going to see this, right? Like if, uh, let's do a short example. So if price pushes down, pulls back, say price rolls over here, you enter here. And if price pushes down to this level here, but never takes takes it out, and then you see this movement, you can you can hold this trade. You can logically say, well, the last attempt of buyers to come in is right here. So buyers are going to come in, and we should see price roll over and trap these buyers here to take them out. But if you get price push up, pull back, and then push up again, Right. This this is showing you it's like it's like you can identify the story and say buyers are here. Buyers are coming back in the market. Are they going to hold price or sellers just going to take them out? Price pushes back. Buyers hold and they take out the sellers here. So now we're thinking instead of instead of price, you know, rolling over and going like that, the buyers might actually pr take price and take out of this level here. So protect yourself, protect yourself. Right? It doesn't necessarily need to take out a certain level for you to like identify how the market's moving, where the buyers are, where the sellers are. We just want to identify what's going on in the market. And just like I said, I took this trade, took 90% off, rest of it broke even. If I was in something down here, right, I would be safe. But my trade here just got taken out and if I was looking for another trade, what I would probably like to do is to say, well, we have buyers here, we have sellers here. When price comes down, getting more discounted, right? It's getting cheaper. Do the buyers want to buy it? And when price pushes down, compression, 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 big, big launch, right? Decent area to say, oh, the buyers want it, right? We pushed all the way up to the sellers. Buyers come in, sellers, buyers come in, sellers full drop off of the buyers. We're like, okay, the sellers are back in the market. This area here is, is probably going to get taken out, right? Price pushes down aggressively, pushes back up, pushes down, and all of a sudden you get this V shape again. We're like, oh, we got buyers coming in the market. You're like, okay, well, what's, what's happening? I could get into the market because my bias says we're going at least to this next level, right? And I got nice room if I got into the market somewhere here, right? Price and just price wanted to go up to top here, right? You're you're in a nice area because it looks like it's going that way on the higher time frame, right? Cruise ship and the speedboat kind of concept. But this we get buyers come in and at this previous high, do we have sellers come back in? Right? No. We get sellers attempting Buyers push price aggressively higher. Everyone's thinking, let's buy, let's buy, we're going to the moon. And then sellers step in here after getting taken out previously. You're like, okay, well, why is price not holding? Okay, sellers want, sellers want to could push price lower, right? But like I was saying on that last example, this, uh, let's see, this one, this one here, this one here. If price is pushing up and making bullish structure, right? We're mo we're moving higher. At this high, is this a really high quality area to take a buy? Right? Just like here, is this a high quality area to take a buy or like this? Is this a really high quality area to take a buy to take out this previous level here? Right? You have to think. You're like, well, the best traders professional traders or lucky traders are here, 
right? The safe traders are probably around somewhere like this. And then the last attempt to get into the market before it takes this high here is those retail traders saying, we're bullish structure, we're gonna take out the high, it's a weak high because it never took out a strong low, blah, blah, blah. You say this, you say this story. Buyers pile in here, the market does a little whoop and then goes. So this last here just fuels this move. Price pushes up, a lot of buyers get into the market here. Price pulls back down. These people get trapped into the market. Price pushes down, holds, sellers come in. Do the buyers want to come back in? Price holds and then a quick launch, right? This launch here is a little bit more difficult to get into, just like I was saying in previous videos, because you have such a liquidity build up here, it's trapping people. And so as it flips the orders, you have quick momentum, right? And it's more like you just got to get into the market, kind of like this situation here or this one here. It's like it just traps them in and then launches, right? So this trade here is a risky trade based on what I was showing you because our target would be this level here. Right? It's a little bit more risky. It's harder to get in. But if price pushes up here, right, and just wants to go higher, right, you can you can luckily snag a couple points here and there. It's like you just it's not the safest trade. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but it, yeah, that's that's kind of like my analysis of what what's going on in the EU. Right, I could take a trade here. I could also take a trade here, and then the last resort would be around here. But same thing. It's like you're getting closer and closer to the target, which would be this level here. So we may see price push up, take the level out, a decent drop here, which takes out all of these sellers or all of these buyers in this area, right? Your buyers here, buyers, buyers, buyers. We could go whoop, like this, right? So any position here, now that it took out a previous level, either break it even or take full, full TP, right? So that's, that's gonna be my analysis for today. It's um, no, <laughs> it's it's a little bit um, it's a little bit more of a choppy market, right? But there's always opportunity opportunities in choppy markets, as long as we're we're seeing things from a higher viewpoint, and if we just look at the market, right? The higher viewpoint, just like I was explaining, we have buyers come in the market, sellers come back here, they take out this previous low here, which gives the higher. Sorry, this is gonna be the four hour. It gives a higher time for perspective, a better discount. So as price rolls over here, right? We have sellers here, we have buyers here. If I was in a buy position here, I'm not assuming that the sellers are going to be taken out, right? Maybe, right? It might be a good chance, chance. But I'm looking to get in at a safe level and get out at a safe level, and that's my goal. That's how I want to trade. It, it works for me. I got a message this morning from a couple of people saying like, oh, you only trade the one minute? Why don't you trade any the other time frame? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just impatient. I like to get in the market, have the analysis work, go to my take profit or, you know, two R, one and a half, two, three R, whatever, and, and try to get out, try to get in, get out. It's just, it, it, it seems to work for me. I, I, I like trading. I like getting in the market. And um, I, it's hard for me to take a trade, essentially like look for a trade here and be like, well, I'm gonna hold this trade. And this trade currently is, is nine days long. I just, it would just be very difficult for me. But the concepts work on any time frame. Uh, so the last plug that I'm gonna do is just bring this image back in. This is one that um, that that is just, I'm so proud of, right? This is gonna be the course that we're, we're releasing or the masterclass that we're releasing on April 1st. We're gonna start just after April 1st, probably on the first weekend, but we're gonna include um, like full support, we're gonna do weekly zoom, uh, zooms, right? For the course, we're gonna do um, Q and A's. We're gonna have live trading every single morning, New York session. So you can trade with me, see how you know sleepy I look, and how I how I look at the market and just take trades. Um, also, yeah, if you want any any assistance, right? Like I said, priority support. You're gonna be able to ask for support and get a response. It's not gonna be like a week later. And then all of a sudden I'm going to brush you off. I'm sorry. I'm going to brush you off. I'm going to answer questions and I, some responses might take a video response. I love helping. So 
I want to make sure that everyone gets what they need. We can hold everyone's hand along the way and make everybody as as profitable as we can. Uh, it's not going to be a very it's not going to be a very um, intense, difficult course because I try to break things down into like the the easiest possible um, digestible material as as possible. I guess you could say it's probably a horrible way to say it, but easiest way to analyze the markets and and that's how I believe that every every trader should trade. It's it's not it's not a, a mechanical system by any means, but things happen over time um, in in repeatable patterns and we just need to make sure that we can identify those patterns in the market um, whether they're you know they're bigger movements or smaller movements or whatever but we want to tell the story as best we can uh, to get in safely and out safely uh, so that's that's my plug that's my plug but uh, I'm gonna go see if I can get Instagram working is there any questions I see a couple people joined here I just want to make sure that if there's any questions or, or anything like that that uh, I answer those questions before I hop off today Yeah, look at the drop. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Gold. Everyone likes to look at gold. Let's look at gold. Drop, push up, break. Okay. Sorry for the uh, quiet right there. That was just a little bit of a analysis. Well, um, yeah, here's a beautiful opportunity for gold. Here's one thing you guys can practice. Send me some messages in the Discord or Instagram or anything like that. Actually, Instagram, I won't get it because my Instagram is not working. But let me know if you actually see this pattern quite often in your in your trading, maybe in your method. Maybe somebody taught it a different way. But if you're having price go down something like this, and then you get a nice, sharp, instant V-shape reaction, what does price do here, right? And how do you analyze the market? Does it hold? Do we have a hold, a break, a draw, or a break and a continuation? Do we have a hold and then price just continues, right? But does that mean anything to you? Let me know. Let me know if you actually see anything like that, and you can see it here on gold, right? We see price push down, 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 up, hold. Price just continues back up, right? So we're getting good indication that we're going higher. But either way. I'm done for today. Sorry if I was a little bit low energy, just dealing with a few things, and I need to get my Instagram back, back up and running. So good luck, trade safe, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.